I will be reviewing the Pioneer TSW 311D4 12 inch double for today. And this is not just a bump it and say it bumps hard review. This is an in depth audiophile real review. So, right now I've got the box only and the manual. Uh, the sub is actually in my car doing work because that's what it's good at. I'm going to start with the box here and some of their claims on the box and then I will get to the subwoofer in motion literally okay first off and the thing that I think a lot of people know is the power rating um, the 1400 watts max that's them trying to blow this thing up and they probably did it with 1400 watts RMS don't power this with 1400 watts on to the back side here there's a very misleading claim that I found out it says 96 decibels or 95 decibel sensitivity and then they have a, a sensitivity rating of 95 decibels plus one and a half or minus one and a half decibels in the car and that is a very misleading claim 96 decibel sensitivity is very high but when you put it in a car and measure that as 96 decibels that's actually a lot less so that's a very misleading claim on the package here. Uh, they measure their sensitivity inside the car. Now that's a very true claim. It might be 96 decibels inside the car. Uh, you can't compare this to uh, a, another subwoofer really because of the way they measure. The uh, last thing I want to warn you all about is the mounting screws that come with this. Um, the Pioneer mounting screws are garbage. All right, so the last claim on here is the frequency response graphs here for the seal, the ported, and the bandpass enclosures. I did plug this into WinISD beta, and uh, I did verify that these two graphs are correct. I, I don't look at bandpass because it's hard to build, and I build my own boxes, so bandpass is kind of hard. Other than that, these two, these check out. These are accurate frequency responses. Uh, in the in the uh, boxes claimed now when ISD beta is a um, a box enclosure calculating program uh, you plug in all the TS parameters of your subwoofer and you uh, click yes <laughs> and it comes up with a, a frequency response curve so, welcome to WinISD Beta. You can find this software as a free download on the internet. The program works when you enter in all the specifications of your subwoofer. You then decide which type of box you want, and the program plots a graph of what the speaker will sound like in a certain box. You can compare different speakers side by side, see how a speaker will act in a certain size box, or at a certain tuning frequency. It's very useful for someone wanting to get it right the first time and only build one box for a subwoofer. The left hand side of the screen has low bass frequencies, eh, give or take 10 to 60 hertz. These are found in rap songs, techno, and other deep bassy types of music. In the middle we have higher bass and mid bass frequencies, from 60 to 160 hertz. These are found in most other types of music. This kind of bass provides a kick or punchy depth to most music. The rest of the graph to the right isn't very important today because we're looking at a subwoofer that only plays low frequencies. So this graph here is for a one cubic foot sealed box. This is what I currently have the sub in. As you can see, there is a roll off around 50 to 60 hertz. That's a typical, or that's typical for a sealed box. What I can see already that's different about this sub is that it has a boost right around 70 hertz. That means this sub is going to have a pronounced kick drum sound. It will be punchy. Let's try a custom built ported box. So I'm going to use the same speaker, but now I want to put it in a ported box. I'm going to make this ported box 2 cubic feet which is pretty big but not outrageous for one 12 inch subwoofer and I'm going to have the box tuned to 35 Hertz you can see looking at the green line that I've gained a lot of low bass 
with this setup. From 20 hertz all the way up to 70 hertz, the subwoofer will be much louder than in the sealed box. It looks like the peak is still around 60 hertz. So I'm going to keep that nice kick in the chest feeling to the bass, even though I'm gaining low bass. Last thing I want to show you before I go out to the car is how much this is going to sound or how this is going to sound in a prefab ported box. One of the cheap ones you can buy all carpeted and everything. These are typically tuned at high frequencies like 42 or 50 hertz. I'm going to retune this same 2 cubic foot bo box at to 50 hertz. Notice the huge peak at around 60 to 70 hertz. You will get a lot of kick out of this in a prefab box. But look at our low base on the left. We've lost a good deal of low base. It's not much different than having it in the sealed box. So knowing this, let's take a look at the real thing and see what all this sounds like. It's all about the install, you know. Get you have to have a solid box, no leaks whatsoever. Good uh, power and ground wires to your amplifier, no skimping. Um, a strong signal from your head unit, or if you have a line driver or a bass processor, uh, use that to boost the signal going into the amp so that the amp doesn't distort. And and so many, I mean, everything is set up right, um, so. This is giving that Pioneer subwoofer everything that it needs to do the best job that it can. So if you have less than awesome or a less than awesome install, or you've skimped somewhere down the line, you will not get as good of results as I've gotten. Go in, I'm done with compromising. We gotta let them